Hey guys, this is my Raspberry Pi powered robot car from Freenove. Now I just recently put this together. I'm still working out a few issues with it, but I'm gonna sh basically go over it now. I'm gonna quick cut away to a quick demo for a few seconds and I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna review some of the features of the car and talk about it for a bit. And then I'll show you some more, uh, some more demo uh, clips at the end of this video. So any case, let, let's take a quick look at this. All right, so that was it in action. Now let, let's take a quick look at this. Now, first thing I wanna show you is the, the batteries. So I wanted to talk about that. I actually already recorded another video on what batteries you should get and what batteries you should avoid. So go back and check that video um, if you want more information about that. But if you want a reputable battery supplier, check the link in the description. And uh, yeah, so these batteries, um, don't get these. Don't get UltraFire and uh, don't get any um, non-name brand batteries and uh, or maybe do but at least don't basically never buy batteries never buy the uh the 18650 batteries these are 18650 lithium ion batteries never buy them off of amazon or you know alibaba or aliexpress or ebay basically there are a lot of counterfeit batteries and you kind of have to assume they're going to be counterfeit these days so you know avoid these batteries um, that's basically happening with the 18650 lithium ion batteries so there are some recommended uh, vendors that have uh, reputable batteries that you can kind of trust so uh, check the link in the description for that and i'm also going to link to uh, some discussions online about those batteries so any case yeah, get the right batteries. That's pretty important. I've had issues with those. Um, so that's that's one issue to point out right away. Now, let, let's take a look at this real quick. All right, so basically, uh, let, let's take a look at what we have here for hardware. So um, basically, this board on top here is, the, is a Raspberry Pi 4. And you can see... <clears throat> It essentially is sitting on top of a robot board. So the main thing is this this robot board here, right? So this controls the motors and stuff. So if you look under, and it has, you can see it has, you know, wheels attached. The wheels basically attach directly to these motors. So it comes with these four nice looking motors down here. Now, basically these are relatively small motors that fit inside these or big yellow gearboxes. So these, these uh, most of this big uh, yellow box here is just a gearbox that uh, basically changes it so you can it can fit into the wheels here like that. So in any case, it has that and the batteries would fit inside these battery slots, right? So you, you, you've got the, the motors, the gearboxes, the battery slots all connected to this uh, robot board. The main component here being the robot board, this thing here. And you got these, you have a power button that turns on power to the whole system and then another button that turns on power to the motors. Now, other thing I'm gonna point out here is underneath here, there is, this is like a, a line tracking module. So this helps it track uh, lines using infrared. So let's see if I can get a good, uh, yeah, it has these little infrared lights on the bottom here for tracking lines. And I believe that will, will help you follow a light in the dark too. So it, you can like shine a flashlight on the floor and it's gonna follow it. Now the other component here, so you, you can see the Raspberry Pi is connected with this little thing here. And now you can see, uh, actually let me turn this back over real quick for a sec. Now you can see the, the motors are connected to the bottom of this robot board here, two here and two in the front there, uh, hidden underneath that thing a little bit. Um, now you can see here, you have a couple motors here connected to this thing. And the, this goes over to two motors in this head structure. And we'll take a look at that in a sec. You have another cable here, um, going over here that connects to the ultrasonic sensor in the head and this ribbon cable coming directly from your uh, CSI port on the Raspberry Pi 4 directly to the camera on the head. Now the head is a little bit uh, wobbly and it doesn't feel too secure. Um, one thing I'm gonna have to fix is this actually pulls right off pretty easily. So I don't wanna, I wanna be careful if I flip it upside down and I'm gonna need to add another screw underneath to make sure it's held in um, tightly. Now this, uh, the motor here, I actually had to put an, a third screw in here to hold that in. The instructions do tell you to do that. It still feels wobbly, but this thing actually moves pretty swiftly once it's powered on. These motors move the head around. You know, it can pan up and down and side to side pretty quickly. Now you, let's take a look over here. Um, hopefully the lighting is letting you see this well enough, but you have a motor here that makes the head go up and down. You'll have a motor here that sticks down onto the robot board and this, this helps it pan side to side. Now, 
Let's take a look at the front really quick. Basically the head of this thing, right? So you can have um, your ultrasonic sensor right here and that is not, okay, there we go. Yeah, when I put my hand in there to the, yeah, look at that. The it had, I have this auto uh, focus thing on my camera that's supposed to focus any, anyways. So uh, yeah, the, these are the, you could think of them as eyes, but they're ultrasonic sensors. They basically just sense how, how close or how far away a solid object is. And it's good for like object avoidance and stuff like that. So that's a pretty nice thing. Now in here, in what looks like the mouth or whatever, you, you can see there's actually a camera lens. It's a tiny Raspberry Pi camera. And um, also while we're at this angle, yeah, you can see this other uh, cable here that connects to uh, this uh, this IR board, the, the line following IR board on the bottom. But any case, so yeah, so you see the camera here and the uh, ultrasonic sensor here. Now, turn it around this way, you can see the, the board on the back here. So you can see uh, this is the back of the ultrasonic sensor board, has that little colored cable right here that goes right here to your, uh, goes right over to your GPIO pins right here on the Raspberry Pi board. And you see the ribbon cable coming right from that camera. I had to kind of snake it through here. It's a little bit messy and it connects to the Raspberry Pi on the CSI port. So <clears throat> there's that. Um, what else do I want to talk about? So I do kind of need to neaten up these these uh, cables. Maybe I'll do a project where I, I'll, I'll probably do that. And I kind of want to make like a 3D printed uh, enclosure for the back of this, but I might want to build some add-ons for this later on. I'm not sure what I'm going to do first or what I'm going to do with this yet. So um, one thing I, I want to point out uh, well, while I remember in this video, you can power the Raspberry Pi th through its uh, USB-C power port right here. But <clears throat> one thing to be aware of, so normally when this robot's operating, both the Pi and the robot board and all the motors are all powered from the batteries. The batteries run out relatively quickly, but um, you can actually power the Raspberry Pi from this port, but powering the Raspberry Pi from this will not give power to the robot board. So you can't just, for testing purposes, you can't just connect a, a cable to the Raspberry Pi and expect it to work without batteries. So if you wanna test the motors out and calibrate them and stuff like that, you can't do it from, well, just based off of uh, power coming from a power adapter. You have to do it with charged batteries and those charged batteries have to be installed in order to test out the motors and stuff. So that's a bit of a pain, but something to be aware of. Um, however, if you're working on installing the OS and the software on the Pi itself, you can just plug the Pi right in and, uh, you know, power the Pi up from a cable here, even though you don't have access to the motors and stuff, you can still bring the Pi up and work on anything you need to, like installing the OS and that kind of stuff that way. So it gives you a little bit more time to do all that stuff that's going to take you forever. Um, installing the OS, uh, you know, put installing all the packages for your software and all that stuff that will take a while. So uh, yeah, you just pl I would recommend plugging it in for that. And then once you have to do things with the motors, that's when you're going to have to put the batteries in. And um, <clears throat> for actual use, obviously, you're going to want the, to power purely based on the batteries. So the other thing to point out is that this thing is not, um, let's move the camera over here a little bit. Yeah, so the other thing to point out is that you can't charge the batteries with a cable. So if you plug a bat a cable into here to power the Raspberry Pi, that will not charge the batteries. So if you wanna charge the batteries, you have to pull the batteries out, put them in a charger, charge them separately, pop them back in. Now that's a pretty big pain, especially considering how quickly my batteries have been uh, running out. Now those UltraFire batteries in the back that I mentioned, those run out really quickly. Those are like 10 minutes now I have some more reputable batteries that like, or sorry, those, those are like two minutes and I have more reputable batteries that are more like 10 minutes and I'm hoping to get some better quality batteries that last even more than that. But really I'd like to come up with some kind of battery solution that lasts more like a whole lot longer than that. I'd really like this to be able to, I, you know, I, I, inv I dream about being able to leave this thing to run automatically by itself for like a full hour. Cause if a robot vacuum can do it, so can my robot car. Like this is a really simple robot car. And I, I happen to have like a, it's actually a shark. It's a, almost the same thing as a Roomba, but a different brand. And this, I have a robot vacuum that just spends like over an hour, you know, vacuuming the floor in my house, just going from room to room. And if that stupid thing can do it with all the motors and power, they're actually powerful motors. And if that stupid thing can do it, um, my, I, there has to be a good battery solution for my robot car. And I'm going to do some investigation and try to come up with a good solution for that. So I'll see how that goes and hopefully make a video on that in the future. So, um, but yeah, it, it, it is a pain pulling the batteries out. Um, 
and especially when they're you know counterfeit batteries that run out after a very short time so any case see i've stopped using those ultra fires but I'm, I'm waiting for some good batteries any case the other thing that i kind of don't like is the where you put the batteries in here um these battery slots this is actually really hard i actually usually have to get like some kind of tool or something to pry the batteries out it's really tricky sometimes i can get him get them out with my fingers but they're really tough to do so i'd like to maybe even rip that whole thing off and put like some other type of thing to put the batteries in there either that or find a way to charge them while they're within while they're inside this thing um even better i'd like to get a much higher capacity battery bank and charge them and get set it up in such a way that I can charge it without removing it. Like I definitely, you either have to be able to remove it. I mean, obviously I want the higher capacity, but definitely you also need to be able to at least either remove it easily to charge it or charge it while it's still in there, one or the other. But if it's hard to remove, and you have to remove it to charge it that that's a huge that's just not you know a workable solution i need something better than that so i'm going to see what i can come up with for that so stay tuned for that i'm going to be making some more videos on this thing but um <clears throat> yeah this is this is my initial this is just my review of the robot and i'm going to show you some demo clips now so uh, i'm going to cut away to those right now all right, so what we see it doing here, it's trying to navigate using the ultrasonic sensor and it's trying to perform obstacle avoidance, but it's kind of doing a really bad job of it. It's doing the opposite of what it's supposed to be doing because um, the forward and reverse directions on this are reversed. So there's actually a fix. You can go into the configs and edit a few things in the configs for this. Um, I have yet to do that, but basically, the robot has forward and reverse um, swapped, so it's it's trying to to drive away from thing obstacles, but it's actually going straight towards them. So the camera sees them, but the direction it it, it sees something in front of it, but instead of drive backing up to get away from it, it drives straight forward, or 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 vice versa. But but po point is, it's it, it's doing the opposite of, of what it's supposed to be doing. So it, it's it's still fun to watch it, and you, you notice how quickly it. it that the head moves around um, in three different positions to get three different views of what's in front of it and figure out which way it wants to turn. So it, it is pretty quick and that's a lot of quick motion to be making constantly. I was kind of surprised about that. But um, but yeah, it's, it's neat to watch in any case and it'll be even more neat when it can successfully navigate around. And uh, the, the LEDs are, or the, the LEDs are, are pretty neat looking too. You can have different patterns. You can have them quickly flash. You can have them do like a breathing pattern alternating different colors and uh that, that's pretty neat but it's just flashy colors it doesn't really have that much to do with the actual robot behavior but uh any case yeah here it is this is me manually controlling it it was um not super responsive from the app i'm controlling it from the ios app so this is me manually controlling it it wasn't super responsive but it, it's kind of working you can kind of move it around partially because the directions are reversed it's a little bit tricky to to navigate to actually control which direction it's going to go in and the way you turn um and here i am uh yeah here i am manually moving the head around see it moves a lot slower when you manually manually move it versus uh you know when it moves by itself for navigation so and that that's a uh, i'm trying to get my phone in the the shot here um th this is me moving the head up and down and you can see the camera it shows a camera view um from my phone so on, on my phone i can see what the robot sees through the robot's camera it's not the best camera so the it, the conditions are relatively low low light so um the I mean, this is me. I'm actually recording this with a Sony camera with a low light lens, and I'm controlling it with my phone. And so, so you can see the yeah. In, anyways, the the camera that the the Pi has that's connected to the, to the Pi doesn't do too well in low light conditions. In any case, this is a this is the robot uh, spinning around in circles. Only one wheel is actually moving, and this is after I lost connectivity to. This is a I recorded this on a different day, but this is my last measurement of the voltage. So, and uh, over here, you see the server is on. This is a VNC connection to the Raspberry Pi. You see low voltage warning on the Pi itself. Now, I'm not sure why I still have a VNC connection open. It might be frozen at this point. I don't think I tried it. But um, if you look over here, my SSH connection to the Raspberry Pi has a, you know, send disconnect broken pipe so it's disconnected so basically it disconnected while i was having the thing turn so it just continuously was turning and it made it go basically 
in circles because I couldn't control it to tell it to stop turning. Um, and you know, as the battery gets lower and lower, it's less capable of only one wheel is moving because it just has the power to only move one wheel, basically. Now, at this point, I'm basically going to, uh, you know, these last few clips, I'm going to be showing, um, you know, some of the parts that I got in the box and a few clips of uh, e e me putting it together and a little, little bit of the progress as I was building it. These are just some extra clips I wanted to share um, just at the end of the video, just to, so you see kind of what comes in the box and some other things. Um, just some extra stuff that I thought would be useful. Now, um, you know, if you want more content like this in your YouTube feed, definitely hit that subscribe button and you, you, you probably also want to hit the bell icon otherwise YouTube won't let you know when we come out with new videos um, you know give me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below if, if you've had similar experience or you have any questions comments criticisms whatever you want to say we want to hear it and other people watching this video probably will get some value out of your comments too definitely leave a comment down below um, we have a ton of great content like this so uh, yeah definitely hit that subscribe button we, have, we do a lot of other stuff electronics coding so servers, Linux, all sorts of great stuff you don't want to miss out on, so hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description for where you can pick this up and where you can buy good batteries. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on that next video.